Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. How are we doing today? I can hear the geese are happy. So, I don't know how the weather's been in your area, but um, pretty much since my last video, it has been nothing but rained here, which is very, very good. Actually, it feels like it's going to start raining here again. Um, you know, in the springtime, it's supposed to be nice and cool and lots of rain, and this spring so far has been hot and miserable and not a whole lot of rain. And we're finally getting the rain that we need. Uh, about every day it rains. Actually, yesterday we had uh, a couple times there was some hail. Uh, everything seems like it's doing pretty good though. That's why I haven't put any of the warm weather crops out yet is because you never know with the weather around here yet on when weather winter is going to say it's over. So, haven't talked to you guys in a while and haven't showed you around. And so, I figured maybe this evening, all the guineas. I figured I'd take you along this evening on uh, the evening chores here. So that way, uh, you know, you can catch up on things, see how everybody's doing. So, as you can see the pigs here, their pen is just getting to be a muddy mess. As you can see their pasture down there is finally growing and coming in pretty nice with all this rain, but those plants are still way too young. I don't want to turn them out just yet. So unfortunately, I got to keep them up tight here against the barn for now. And uh, hopefully here within another week or two here that uh, that uh, pasture down there will be good enough that we can move them down there. But the pigs seem to be doing pretty well. Uh, just the mud and the mess there, but they kind of like that. Hopefully, like I said, that within a week or two here that their pasture will get up high enough I don't know, I mean, it's still, it looks better than it ever has. I mean, I never had any kind of grass growing in there whatsoever. It was always just ferns and weeds, and now it actually looks like grass. But I just don't want to turn them out there on yet and yet and have them ruin it. You can see it's really greening up. It's not so much just rocks. So, next we got to get the uh, cows their food and the chickens their food. And it looks like it might start raining here. I'm hoping it'll hold off here so that way we can uh, go ahead and continue this. I don't want to really film in the rain. I don't know if it's a Chinese geese here or not, but these Chinese geese, they don't seem to be the best at uh, going broody and hatching eggs. Uh, we've been having a lot of problems with that here lately. Um, we had a second one go broody, plus the original one that went broody. And, uh, I don't know. They just don't seem to stay on the nest. They, uh, you know, we had one last night. She wanted to spend the night down here on this nest. She covered the eggs up this morning and took off out for a morning straw and never came back. Uh, the one up in the barn there, she's kind of abandoned that nest too. So I don't know if it's with Chinese geese, if they just don't go broody or if it's an actual problem that we have just with our geese. Uh, one thing like, especially the ducks, uh, we, I was always told that a lot of these farm ducks that you don't wanna try to breed them and let them hatch their own eggs, especially uh, khaki camels. So we had a khaki camel last year and she went broody and she sat down on the eggs and she was acting like the best mom in the entire world. 
And I was like, huh, isn't this amazing? Because everybody said, you don't want a khaki Campbell. Well, she sat on those eggs for, what is it, four weeks, 28 days. And all of a sudden, the eggs started cracking and the eggs started hatching. And as soon as they started cracking and she started feeling those little babies squirming underneath her, she jumped up and she ran away as fast as she could. She didn't want to have anything to do with them once they started crawling out of those eggs. She took off. So I ended up, I took all the eggs and I took the babies that hatched out and I put them down in the, in the brooder and turned the heat lamp on them and got them back to life. There was quite a few of them that were a little bit lifeless. And uh, then I took the eggs and I put the eggs in the incubator and I finished hatching out the eggs there and we ended up having to raise them. So just a note to yourself, if you ever do get into eggs or, you know, especially ducks that, and you want to hatch them, khaki Campbells are not the best moms. Now, on the other hand, the other ducks, it was quite the story last year. We haven't had any try to hatch any eggs yet, but uh, last year they did the same thing the turkeys did, that in the coop there, they pushed all the eggs together and then they all co-sat on the eggs where we had up to four ducks on the eggs. And so then they hatched them out and they actually raised them up it worked out really well. I, I couldn't believe it how they were able to make it work out, but they did. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set you down here for a minute. So Wilma's still pregnant, no baby yet. I think she's getting pretty close though. I don't know if you can see down there, her udder is starting to fill up with milk air. She's starting to look a lot closer. So we're hoping within the next uh, week or two here at the most that uh, we'll be having another baby calf on the property. So this will be the first calf actually born on the property. I know we bought, these couple jerseys we have Whopper Jr. now you know we bought Whopper Jr. he was only a couple days old same way with Stewie and uh cheeseburger they were both bought in as baby bottle calves bottle calf babies there's Whopper Jr. right now getting himself a drink We weaned them off milk about 
three days ago. He hasn't gotten any milk now for about three days. He's doing really good as far as eating wise. Uh, I mean, that's normal that you can usually wean them off. I've done it anywhere down to 30 days. Uh, he's at uh, six days, weeks, so he's doing really good. I mean, a lot of it, what you have to monitor is what they're actually eating. Uh, you want to make sure that they're eating right away. That's one thing that you got to you gotta watch with all your newborn animals is watch and look at. Not so much that, you know, you, you want to make sure that, of course, they're drinking milk right away. You want to make sure they get that drink of colostrum. But then after that, you want to kind of keep an eye out and make sure that they are uh, eating. Because... I was talking to a lady once and she was telling me how she bought a goat. It was a bottle baby and oh, the sun's back out. So eh, it's still raining. But uh, she bought a bottle baby goat one time and she said it was about almost a month old. And it wasn't eating any grain or hay or nothing. And she bought the baby and, well, it died on her. And that's what I, I was like, first off, I was like, why would you even buy the baby? But she came here and she bought some off of us. And she was very shocked to see, you know, like ours, most of ours within day five that they are eating grain. You know, and even if they are bottle babies, we make sure that they have grain and feed available to them because you want to make sure that they have other options that they're not going to just want to drink milk that they are going to want to uh, eat other things and especially with ruminants like the goats and the cattle you want to get that rumen going you know research shows that the milk when they suck on their mama in the bottle, that that milk actually, the esophageal groove, causes the milk to bypass the rumen and go straight into the atomism. So there's nothing going into that rumen to get that rumen going unless you get some grain or some hay in there. So that's one of the things that we always try to promote is to make sure that they have fresh feed and hay and water right from the get-go. All right, she's all done with her food. I gotta put her back. She's kinda uh, quite the hog. Put you guys down here. She'll eat everybody's food if you let her. She's always the first to clean up her feed, and then she always tries to steal everybody else's. Gave Stewie his grain, but he's out, or not Stewie, Whopper Jr. his grain, but he's out in pasture right now, so I'll have to wait and see whenever he's so ready to come So this morning when in. I was up here, and I happened to walk by here, I noticed I heard some chirping. I look in here and there's a little baby duck running around in here. Can you hear him? And then I got to look in and I saw a little baby turkey. So it looks like she's sitting on both, well the three of them, 
are sitting on both turkey and duck eggs. So I really haven't got to see how many have hatched so far. I know they have quite a few eggs, but they're all not supposed to hatch at the same time. There is like a couple, actually about a week or two delay in some of these. So I wanted to take a quick look here with you guys and see if we can see anything. I don't want to spook them. There's a little baby turkey. There's one. How many is there? You don't have any eggs underneath you, Manny. And how many do you have underneath you, one wing? Come on. Get up. Let me see. Oh my. You got two little ducklings. So that's all we got so far. Looks like these eggs, they didn't make it. Yeah, it looks like these ones here didn't make it. That's a little duckling. And this one here is rotten. All right, we're going to let you guys alone. Looks like she's going to steal the rest of the eggs. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if a turkey can raise ducklings. We've never done that before. But the nice thing is the one gray one in there, we call her Nanny Gobbles. And the reason we call her Nanny Gobbles is last year after we acquired her, she would always follow every hen or duck that had babies and assist them with taking care of them. So she was always kind of like the nanny. But we'll see how things go. All right, Walter, are you all done? Come on, Walter.
Come on. Let's go, water. And I just got to give Stuart his last bit of food here. Come on, Stewie. There you go, buddy. We're raising Stewie for meat, so I always give him a little extra grain there. I don't know. I want to see how this goes here. We're going to try to do one where it's all grass fed and see if there is that much of a difference. But the thing is once you get them started on grain, it's hard to get them off of grain. And the one thing was we wanted to butcher the one this year. So we knew we had to try to get it as fast as possible. So we gave them a lot of grain to kind of boost his growth well that's pretty much all of feeding in the evenings the only thing left i gotta do is carry water and so i think i'm gonna go ahead and, and sign out and i guess i'll see you in the next one thanks again for stopping by the homestead bye